Cancer, welcome to your Summarize Annual Reading for 2020. And before we get started, I got to say something that I forgot to say to Aries, and I'm going to have to say it to Libra and Capricorn and all the other signs. But um, just a reminder that, um, you know, it's a general reading, number one. So some of these messages here may or may not resonate might be the other person in your life, okay? Also, you have power. Yes, some things are faded, but your response to these energies that are faded are within your power. How you wanna exercise free will is up to you. Thirdly, I gotta remind you that, you know, if you want somebody to just, you know, tell you what you wanna hear and lie to you, I'm not gonna be the reader for you. You gotta click away now because I'm going to read the cards as they are. And if spirit tells me to say something, I'm going to say it. And I'm trying to help people who want to deal with reality. They want to be self-aware. They want to personally grow, um, spiritually grow and heal. Okay. And if that's not your thing, don't even, don't even bother with this channel. Okay. Because I don't want to hear any comments down below about how I'm hating on Cancerians. No. It's just, you know, stuff goes on, like Saturn in your seventh house, which <laughs> we're going to talk about, okay? We're going to talk about that in this reading. And I apologize, I'm having trouble with my throat, too, which is something I tend to have um, when I do cancer readings, okay? Because that energy wants to, like, cut off what I'm saying because of your sensitivities and... Those of you who are Cancerians and you're like, no, that's not me. Just speak the truth. I want to hear it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm not trying to murder anybody's feelings like a Cancer once said in my comments. Okay. What I'm trying to do is forearm you by forewarning you. And if you see this through a positive lens rather than a negative lens, then, then what you're, then, you know, what I'm saying is going to be empowering, not disempowering. And that's my intent. By the way, I mean, I can see that the last quarter of this year is going to be trying Okay, you're going to be making forward movement financially, but I'm just warning you up front. Okay, this is part of the forewarning, forearming. This doesn't have to be you. Five of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, you know, loss, lack. It does not have to be you. What you can do now is start saving your money and making sure that you're not spending it frivolously and that you're not making unwise investments so that if and when something does happen like this next November and December, you have got some padding there in your bank account to act as a shock absorber so that you can respond to these faded energies more favorably. Because yeah, you're going through a lot of changes. This is going to be a little bit similar to last year in that we're continuing on this year with more eclipses in your sign and your opposite sign of Capricorn, which I talked at length about in the in-depth. You know, I've been through this energy as an Aquarian, okay? Um, it was the Aquarians and Leos who were getting hit with the eclipses before Cancer and Capricorn. So I can definitely speak to that in greater detail if you're interested. It's on Vimeo, but uh, suffice it to say that a lot of major shifts are happening because of these eclipses that have been going on since mid-2018 and will continue on throughout this year. And also for you, there's a lot of astrological activity impacting your seventh house, having to do with um, long-term committed partnerships such as marriage, maybe even business partnership for some of you, okay? And as the year progresses, it's going to get more and more with Saturn moving into the eighth house, which at some point during this year, it does move into that. And I got to tell you, I've been through that as well. And I speak to that in detail on Vimeo. Um, not a picnic, not a picnic. When Saturn was in my seventh house, I got a divorce and I had trouble finding um, 
romantic partners that were interested in commitment. So that might be something you're going through right now. If you're married, you know, and everything's going well, well then congratulations because whatever relationships remain while uh, Saturn is in the seventh house can stand the test of time. If you can make it through Saturn in the seventh house in a partnership, you got it, you know, you got it. But I'm also going to continue to warn you about this money issue I see at the end of the year, knowing that Saturn is moving in your eighth house, having to do with shared resources, debt, taxes, you know, play your cards right, okay? Because when once Saturn moves into that eighth house, you have to answer to debts, which is, by the way, what I've been going through for the last two and a half years. It's been brutal. And it can be a situation where people might owe you money and they might get away with not paying you. You're like, wait a minute, I've got a court order, which by the way, I saw that showing up, involvement with the law. And I saw over here in uh, some of you that have legal situations, I saw something about an attorney in April and possibly going to court or trial in May of this year. So, you know, watch out for that because once Saturn gets into your eighth house and it's moving in that direction toward the end of the year, you, you will have to give account for your debts. You will have to face them. You will not be able to, you know, and, and, and unfortunately that energy kind of makes it so that people who owe you money can get away for a season. Okay. And, and, and that's the painful thing of it. So do not waste your money. I'm warning you now to prepare you and forearm you. This is because I care about my cancer viewers and, and all of you, regardless of sign. I'm trying to help you, not hurt you or harm you, okay? This showed up with a legal issue. Like I said, it came up in the spread. Good news is by August, you have a lot of opportunities and possibilities and paths opening up for you. And I saw that here. Um, in October progress, okay, might by August have a lot, a lot of options and paths and not really clear about what's viable and what's not and kind of hanging around waiting for what's going to happen. But then you start getting forward movement. And look at this faded change. This year, some of you are going to deal with an ex coming back, okay, um, but I see that there's a need for healing and balance here and disconnecting from something that you were emotionally connected to before. You're walking away, getting the healing and going through changes. I think some of these changes are going to be difficult, um, you know, the first half of this year, but I see it getting better on the money end, though. Uh, watch your money this year. Um, with... January, I can see you are closing out a major cycle. Also, I got to say as a side note, very important, a, a synchronicity I saw with the spread is that you have a lot of tens in this spread. You have two ones, you have a zero. So tens are about completion. By the way, the world card is about completion. You come into this year where it's like you got to integrate some lesson. You got to close something out with this world card and i see it all throughout this year the tens showing up um the good news is that by this august time frame that i saw um definitely you have a new beginning possibly a new partnership and it might be with someone from your past um others of you you're like oh hell no and they're saying hell no back at you <laughs> you know but it's it's a general reading so um you take what applies and discard, you know, what doesn't. But I do see that definitely um, this is about partnership, okay? this There's some lesson that you're having to integrate, maybe patterns of behavior in partnership where there's been some kind of restriction going on, uh, where you let your mind get in the way of, of doing what you know you need to do in partnerships, like maybe walking away from somebody that you know you need to, um, that you don't share values with. Maybe, again, looking at shared values. Really, um, that's the energy for January. Now, February, Messenger of Water might have a romantic offer coming in, but it's almost like something is on hold. Somebody's waiting and being burdened by being put on hold. And it could be your energy, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, but I'm also seeing secrets here. Um, hidden relationship, hidden knowledge, uh, clandestine relationship, 
somebody is maybe single and burdened by this and wanting to give more romantically, maybe a romantic gesture. But if you are in a marriage or partnership, I feel like during this month, the two of you could be feeling like you're living separate lives. Now, with a five of water in March, there's a lot of um, guilt or regret or disappointment here. And it might have to do with a family situation. I really think that for most of you, it has to do with some indecision in, in regards to a matter of a heart. Uh, I think a lover for many of you where there's been strife over some duplicitous uh, behavior, a lack of authenticity and a lot of grief. Somebody's feeling very disappointed and regretful and sorrowful about something. It's in the past, okay? Now, in April, I can see with the King of Fire, this could be a... Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and I'm also seeing a an uh, air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, uh, maybe getting some solid new beginnings. Some of you may be getting to a new home, a new job during this particular month, but I'm also seeing with the two kings here, it might be two bosses, and I talk more about this workplace issue on Vimeo because these can represent different industries like business communications, travel with the air sign, I mean, with the, with the fire sign, with the air sign, this could be a legal issue. I got to say that I saw there, there's maybe an attorney here at play. Somebody is um, really passionate about something. If this is a legal situation, like I said, by May, I can see possibly this going to trial or going to court. And it might involve an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I'm definitely seeing an issue here with a lack of mutual effort. And somebody need to make plans and decisions for um, a partnership. But I, I feel like if there's any, if this is a, say, a divorce or a separation going on during this time, it's been because of one-sided giving. And I see that all throughout this year. I'm even seeing it over here. In June, with the Ten of Fire, somebody's dealing with a lot of burdens and, you know, heavy duties and responsibilities and burdens, and it might have to do with career and family, but somebody's also maybe, um, if it is family, it might be a child, an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, but I feel like somebody's very much about their um, self-love and what they're doing to, um, you know, get love for themselves. is maybe putting themselves and another person or possibly a child under some kind of heavy burden. Now, with a messenger of Earth, could be Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn yet again, but I'm seeing steady uh, progress and improvement with your finances. And yeah, maybe communication coming in. I got some weird messages, okay? I got some weird messages that if you, if you are taking a job during June, yeah, with that Nave of Pentacles, that might be a job, a new job starting, but then by July, putting out a job application. So I got some weird stuff like somebody is either they got a new job and then in, 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 they got a new job in June and then in July, they hear back from somebody to say, oh, we'd like to hire you. And, they, and then, you know, they have to say, oh, I'm sorry, I already took another job elsewhere. I'm no longer available. Or they take a job somewhere and they realize uh, this is too much burden, too much responsibility. This is not good for me, myself and I, my career, my family. And they realize um, they need to, you know, put another job application out or apply for a different position so that they can get the forward movement and progress that they want. I am seeing also again in June, maybe another child is involved here. Fire sign Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And I've definitely seen Leo prominent and there's some kind of resistance issue that somebody is resisting something or holding back and it might have to do with a commitment or um, emotional issues that need to be addressed with this fire sign or this earth sign. And then in August, with the seven of water, it looks like you have a lot, a lot of options, but not sure what is viable and what isn't. Not sure how to manifest your ideals and reality. You might have a lot of choices romantically uh, with offers coming in. But I see somebody burying themselves in their work 
or they're working hard on getting some offers because I also feel like whatever is being offered to you romantically is kind of airy fairy kind of idealism in your imagination type energy. I don't really see the offers being very substantial. It's almost like there's some d discretion or shame or guilt or holding back. And in some level, somebody's not clear about something, even though maybe they're fantasizing about it. And then by September with a hangman, it's, it's almost like there's somebody, somebody here is not giving or getting a commitment. They're having to get a new perspective. Something is being left in suspense on hold, maybe needing to sacrifice something. And it might have to do with a nostalgia, somebody from the past, perhaps a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or this woman who is like a very much a seductress, a vixen, okay? Um, somebody is very much nostalgic during this month. I saw it with the astrology as well. And let me see if it's getting a bit dark in here. So I help you all to see. So with this hangman, things are on hold and it's probably is not going to be a good month to make any commitments. But in the next month of October, you get some forward movement and this might involve a Sagittarius, if not you. I definitely see progress going on and it might have to do with someone who you've gone back and forth with. You know, you were coming together and then you were falling apart. You were understanding each other and then having misunderstandings. And now there's a time to, you know, start something new, get a new beginning with this relationship where you're maybe going with the flow and getting some kind of recognition and honor. Others of you may be moving, maybe traveling, having people who are traveling in your home this month, but definitely getting some in the spotlight in some way, getting some recognition or honor in some way. Although I can see that this, some of you are really uh, confident in getting progress. And I did see a warning with this card. Be careful that you're being very grounded and in reality, okay, with this confidence. Confidence is great. You know, optimism is great, but not when it's false, right? That's another reason why I can't lie on this channel. Because to me, what's worse than pessimism is false optimism. I hate getting my hopes up and then having them drop down to ground earth right come smashing down like <laughs> yeah shattered dreams I would rather tell you because I would rather someone tell me you know what the real challenges are and how you know to maneuver it for the best advantage that's what I try to do so I did see in the card a warning some of you are being a little bit foolish and getting this progress forward movement false confidence for some of you obviously not all of you um, but there is a warning that by November, there could be some lack or loss, somebody in need of something, whether it is material or emotional or relational. Again, it goes back to this 10 of fire that kept coming up. The tens came up three times in all three decks that I used for this spread. So this year, it is a major theme about your responsibilities your obligations, your duties. And I've seen it coming up all through even to November where maybe now something about these responsibilities, maybe one-sided giving is resulting in some kind of lack or loss. And it might involve an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, somebody doing some research, some investigations, looking into something and communicating possibly about this issue. And then by December 6th of Earth, you um, really had this thing of, again, it's about equality and sharing, not this one-sided ten of fire stuff, okay? It's about equal give and take, but maybe somebody here is giving more than the other. Somebody here is being breadcrumbed and somebody needs to learn what they're going to invest in and why. And maybe they're bored. Maybe they're bored with what they're doing, but there is an opportunity to get a new beginning in terms of what's being given and what's being received. And so, yeah, during this during the month of giving, right? Well, let me remind you, I've got a lot of advice over on Vimeo, doors of opportunity that are opening up for you this year, along with the, uh, you know, spiritual angelic protection that you're getting this year. I really sense 
that really what spirit is trying to do on the other end is get you into a place of self-empowerment so that you can empower others again about the give and take in relationships and not having it one-sided. Um, there's some message here about that and I hope that it's helped you and encouraged you. And remember, if you want more depth and detail with the astrology, uh, the oracle card advice, and you know all the clarifiers, okay, it is on Vimeo. I hope you will join me there. And I've got a generous three-month rental time frame. And if you want to uh, know how to reach me over on Vimeo, the links are going to be down below. And until next time, wishing you all the best. Be blessed.